Welcome to another video on creating a database-backed web application using PHP and MySQL. We've created an application so far that allows you to search for jokes in a database, add new jokes. However, we're going to notice that there's a problem if we don't format our text correctly. I'm going to put in a joke that says, why doesn't it hurt when you get hit in the head with a can of Coke? And the answer is, of course, it's a soft drink. Now, you notice that these have little quotation marks in didn't and it's, and this will cause an error. When you click submit, you're going to try to enter the database, but you notice it says trying up at the top, but there is no joke number 12. There is no new joke in our database. Why not? We have no error checking to see what's going on, but something didn't work, and it relates to those apostrophes. During the development of an application, it's a good idea to provide error feedback to the user, and it's a bad idea to show that error feedback when you're in the public because uh, people can use those errors to hack your database. But since we're in the process of working on a database, we can still do the error checking. I'm going to insert something here after this command result. I'm going to say or die. Now that doesn't mean that you have to kill somebody. It means that the program is going to die. So if this does not work, if this query that we send to SQL doesn't work, then we're going to die. And we could say something like an error has occurred. Let's save that and see what happens. Let's go back, retry entering the same thing. Why doesn't it hurt? And we answer, it's a soft drink. And now we click Submit. And now we get a little bit of feedback that says an error has occurred. That might be good enough for working with users. I'd like to see a bit more information. Instead of a generic, an error has occurred message, I'm going to actually go look for the error and see if we can find out what it is. I'm going to go search on Google for MySQL I and then error. In the search results, you see this one here that says, there is a function called MySQL I error. Here's two examples of how this is used. You just simply call this function called MySQL error, and then the variable here is the connection string at the very beginning, the object of the connection. So we can do the same thing here, MySQL error with a connection name. So we can say inside these parentheses, we can say MySQL, Remember, we're using I because it's the enhanced. And then we're going to say error in parentheses. We're going to type in MySQL I. Let's go back and try our add joke again. I'm going to just refresh this page. And now the error message says, you have an error in the SQL syntax. Check the manual that it, <laughs> yeah, this is a lot of help. It does tell us where the error is occurring. It doesn't tell us what the error is. You have to know a little bit about SQL to realize that you have to do something special with quotation marks. Let's go find out what it is. Once again, we're going to rely on Google to find out what that is. So let's type in PHP add slashes and see why that is important. So this function called add slashes is going to be useful for us. Let's look at this example right here. We have a little string that says, what does YOLO mean? And then we run this add slashes function on it and echo the string back out to the screen. Over here, we see this thing. It's a slash. It's a reverse slash. These slashes are used because SQL needs to have a way to distinguish a quotation that's in your words versus the quotation that normally comes at the beginning of the sentence. So let's use add slashes in our code. Up here in the top, I'm going to add slashes to each of these. So I'm going to type in new joke question equals add slashes to the new joke question. Let's do the same thing for the answer. So I'll copy this line and paste it. So we'll save both of these, refresh our page. This time we get a properly inserted command here. We have our new joke. And so it appears that add slashes is necessary to make the insert work. Now there are other things that you have to worry about when you accept input from the user and put it directly into your database. There's a whole lesson on how to make your database more secure. We could probably do that at a different time. Let's go search for a question. How to make your SQL query secure 
prevent attacks. Let's take a look at this first page here. This will give you an idea of how complicated the problem is. There is a cheat sheet here. So a cheat sheet should kind of distill the entire problem into a single page that you can easily read. However, if you look at the issues going on, there is a lot of material. And so there's an index to this so-called cheat sheet. So my point is that there is a lot to look at when it comes to security on MySQL and any database. And so before you launch your application out into the wild and pretend that everything is good, you should know that there's a lot of research and potential problems for what we have just done by opening up our database to the user entering jokes. Well, right now we're on a local server. You're the only user of the application. So if you want to wreck your own application, you probably can and there's not a lot of consequences. So we've created an application that's a little bit more useful now. The next video we're going to make it look a little prettier. In this page you see very basic HTML. We're going to dress it up and make it look a little bit nicer, add some more formatting, and that'll be our next video.